Welcome to another episode of Circuit Bread Practicals, where we talk about kind of the intersection between electrical engineering and electrician work. As always, if you're doing any electrician work that you are not comfortable with, please go hire an electrician. It's a lot cheaper to hire an electrician than to go to the emergency room. So with that out of the way, let's talk about ampacity. And I wanted to talk about ampacity in particular because it's something that, well, electricians use all the time and electrical engineers don't ever use. And I've noticed that when I talk to electricians, they seem to expect me to know what they're talking about. And well, I didn't until I looked it up and dealt with it a little bit. So ampacity is basically just the rating of a conductor under ideal conditions without it overheating. So basically, if you have a wire, how much current can you run through that wire under normal conditions? And that's length and also ambient temperature and probably a bunch of other things before that wire gets too hot, that it becomes dangerous. And also who defines what dangerous is? Probably some NEC code, something like that. So again, ampacity is simply the rating of a conductor of how much under normal conditions current can run through it without it becoming dangerous. So that's it. I would like to actually use this opportunity to also talk about the different conductors that you normally work with as doing electrical work in a house. Now again, commercial and industrial is gonna be completely different, but when you're doing a house, like we just wired this house, there are certain um, gauges of wires that are very commonly used and they're for different sizes of breakers and things like that. So let's actually start with the two most common sizes of wire that you're gonna to run to in a house. And that is your 14 gauge and your 12 gauge. So this is 14 gauge Romex. So Romex is a brand name. It's actually an NM non-metallic wire is how you will see it. And that is because of this plastic sheathing and also this uh, paper around it that protects the inner wires. So when you're pulling these through walls and they're getting caught on corners and things like that, if it gets caught on something, it'll gouge this outer sheathing instead of the wire itself. And so it protects it quite a bit. And we actually did use that a couple of times. There are some times we got in the corners and it took a pretty good gouge out of this and we just examined the internal conductor and it was still fine. But this is very, very common that you will find this needs to be run inside of a wall because the idea is that you're not gonna have this exposed in any living spaces, anything like that. So back to ampacity, this is the 14 gauge, 15 amp ampacity rated wire. And this is the 12 gauge, 20 amp ampacity rated wire. And if you look at the sheathing kind of next to each other, that's probably the best way you can see the size difference. It is just a little bit thicker on the 12 gauge and the 14 gauge. As a reminder, gauge, it gets bigger as the number gets smaller. And typical use for these is especially with LEDs nowadays, this will be run for lights because one of these with 15 amps can basically light up an entire floor with plenty of headroom. Like you won't even use close to the 15 amps unless you have a ginormous house and well, that's a different story. Whereas this is typically used more for your stereotypical outlets. Now an outlet is usually rated for only 15 amps, but if you have this, you can have a 20 amp circuit. So your circuit breaker and your main service panel can be rated for 20 amps. That way you can put like 10 on one and 10 on another and not have any problems. And uh, particularly in the kitchen, we thought, oh, well, we use a lot of high powered stuff in the kitchen. So we ran this 12 gauge, 20 amp ampacity wire for basically all of the outlets for the house. And these again are the most common wires you will see when working with a house. So if you were to go to your house right now, if you're in the United States and pull off a switch, pull off a, an outlet, you will probably see these coming out. Now you'll note that this is 12 gauge and this is 14 gauge, but you'll often hear this referred to as 12 two and 14 two. And that's referring to the fact that you have two conductors and a ground, two conductors and a ground. So this is 12 two because it has your hot wire, your neutral, and then your ground, which isn't considered a conductor, it's considered a ground. And you don't see very often three conductors in this, though 14 three is often used for things like three-way lights and smoke detectors. So all of your smoke detectors, according to current code, need to be connected to each other. So you will usually have three conductors in your wire that connects all of them. And that third conductor is simply to send a signal. So if I have a fire in this room, all of the smoke detectors in the house will go off, which should be exciting. I'm kind of curious to see what that's gonna be like. 
but that's not super common. The majority of your outlets and light switches are going to be seeing 12-2 and 14-2. So as you get up, you will sometimes run into 10-2. 10-2 wire is just a little bit bigger than 12-2. And this is gonna be for your dedicated lines like your AC condenser or uh, your electric water heater or a dryer, though a dryer usually is 10-3, excuse me, because it wants to have your hot, hot, neutral, and ground. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, but I just wanted to point this out. So your 10-2 and your 10-3 are usually rated at an, an opacity of 30 amps. So 14 gauge is 15 amps. 12 gauge is 20 amps, 10 gauge is ampacity rated for 30 amps. And again, that's just normal usage. If you're gonna have some long run or something or it's gonna be in extreme conditions, you want to use a different rating. For example, we actually just uh, put in a solar array and it's rated for only 20 amps per circuit, but we used 10 gauge wire because it gets really hot up there and it's not normal conditions. And so because of that, we got bigger rated wire even though technically under normal conditions, we could have gotten away with the 12 gauge. So with that, let's actually jump to our eight gauge. And our eight gauge wire here, it's, you'll notice it's also different. It's rounded and everything's twisted and you have stranded wires in here uh, versus your solid copper wire and it's more of a oval shape on the other ones. So this is eight gauge and you'll notice there is that extra wire. So this is eight three because it has three conductors and ground. Now the reason you'll want three conductors at some, some points and whatever you're doing is that the way you get 240 volts out of the basically 120 volt systems that we have is you have these two out of phase. So this is peak to peak 120 volts. This is peak, peak to peak 120 volts, but they are out of phase so that when they are peak to peak in comparison to each other, they're actually 240 volts. And we did a full tutorial on that. You can go check it out about how power and phase and all that sort of stuff works. But that is how you get it in a real life practical situation. And you'll need a special circuit breaker that uses both sides of the bus bar of your circuit breaker to get positive. Well, I can't really say positive, but basically your two hot lines that are out of phase with each other, then your neutral and your ground. This 8.3 is rated for 40 amps. And I think the only place we used this in this house was for the, uh, there's the AC condenser, but if you tr use it as a heat pump, it actually requires more electricity. So this is 40 amps and we only used it for the heat pump, which is supposedly, so we've heard, much more efficient than other ways of heating your house. So we'll see what happens. Finally, we have our 6.3, which again, 6.3 because we have our three conductors and our ground, and they might look the same at first inspection, but they are, they're different. And if you get them close to each other, you can again see that the six gauge is quite a bit thicker. So six gauge is rated for 50 amps. And 50 amps, that's usually for your range. Um, let's see, what else? If you have an RV plug for 50 amps, something along those lines, you don't use a whole lot of this, which is good because it was really, really expensive, but you don't really use this a whole lot. But at the same time, this is the biggest wire you'll generally use in a residential application such as this. You can get bigger wires, you get into like the aluminum service entry wires or something like that. And that's where you're going from one panel to another panel. But typically for devices and things, you don't get up to anything above 50 amps for your circuit breakers. So this, as your 6.3, is rated for up to 50 amps. So again, reviewing, 14 gauge, 15 amps, 12 gauge, 20 amps, let's see if I can work this down, 10 gauge, 30 amps, 8 gauge, 40 amps, and 6 gauge, 50 amps. And frankly, the only reason I even kind of remember that is because I've been dealing with it a lot the last few weeks. Uh, before that, it, the numbers just all got jumbled in my head and I kept on having to reference them, which is totally fine because this isn't the thing that you do all of the time. So that's it for the non-metallic Romex wire and those ampacities are generally correct. But since we're here, I wanted to talk about THHN or THWN. So this is a six, or excuse me, eight gauge wire uh, that we actually used for our solar. This is just a little piece that we snipped off. 
and THHN, I have no idea what it stands for, except for the THWN variant means it's used for wet locations. However, almost everything that is THHN, if you actually look on it, it'll read and say THWN on there. And almost everything is C. It says HWN-2 or THHN or gasoline. So basically everything is, but if you are going to be using it in wet conditions for whatever reason, always double check to make sure it's what you want. So the difference is you can't run this in the walls of your house. This has to go into conduit and in all but some certain uh, situations. And this is different because it's so slick. Now, if I were to take the uh, eight gauge or the six gauge, uh, excuse me, eight gauge or the 10 gauge and cut off this sheathing, this is not as slick because it's not designed to go through conduit, whereas this is. And so we use this in our shed when we were putting the uh, electrical in there. And it's nice, um, in big rolls, it's actually, it feels like snake oil and it's almost hard when, and you drop it all the time. It's kind of crazy. So just be aware that there are different types of wire out there that you can use in different situations. And technically you can strip this and put it in conduit, but that's not as convenient as just using this, which is designed to be a little bit more flexible, yet stiff enough to be pulled through with fish tape and also slick enough to go through the conduit without getting caught. But even though there are differences on the sheathing and all that, the same principle applies that this being eight gauge wire, uh, when it's tied with a red and a black wire, you would be able to get the eight gauge, which is 40 amps of power through this. And green in this case actually means ground. And those are some important things to remember when you're doing any of this. Okay, I think I have talked enough about ampacity and your different kinds of wires that you work with in the house. I hope this was interesting and helpful. If it was, please like this video, subscribe to the channel so we can share more of our practical tips before very soon we're hoping to get right back into our electronics and electrical engineering topics with control systems and more on circuits and a lot more other topics. We're very excited to get back into that. If you like this, again, subscribe, like, all that jazz, and we will catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.